so now we are going to speak about sensitivity analysis. What's the meaning of sensitivity? That you are sensitive, right? So here, we, what you are trying to do, you are sensitive to the change in the environment. So what you are saying, I'm going to make 100 cars, and I want to be sensitive to the changes in the demand. What if the demand is 80? What if the demand is 120? What if it's 60? Or just, it's 200? So I am trying to be, when I'm making my decision, sensitive to what can happen. The meaning of sensitivity analysis, it's like this. What if, every time someone will say sensitivity analysis, we say, what if? I want to make 100 cars, but what if the demand is 80? What if the demand is 90? What if the demand is 100? What if the demand is 200? So you always say, what if? And this one you say, so I should change maybe my decision. I may, should make different decisions. So it's all about what if. So sensitivity analysis reveals how sensitive expected value calculation are to the accuracy of initial estimates. So we are saying, do you remember we say 10% this, 40% this, 50% this, we have all our options. What if they were 20, 20, uh, 60? What if they were 50, 50, zero? So see, we are trying now to be sensitive with our allocation. Do you remember we said we have two options and two outcomes? And we say we have 60 here and 40 here. But what if we have 50 here, 50 here? What if we have 10 here, 90 here? So sensitivity analysis, you are changing because we are operating under risk. So you are trying to be sensitive to different kinds of risks. We're saying maybe we are going to lose so much, maybe we are going to make so much, maybe the economy is so bad, maybe the economy is so good. You know? So you are trying to be sensitive. So here is the example saying, for example, a capital budgeting situation, a proposed investment may promise a return of what? 10,000. So someone will say, I have an investment, I will give you 10,000 return per year. And a rate of 15%, a rate of return of 15%. But that 10,000 is based on an estimate. See, someone will say, okay, I'm gonna give you every year 10,000. That's based on an estimate, why? What management needs to know is how acceptable would be the investment if the return was 6,000 per year. So someone will say, I'm going to give you 10,000. But what if it was 6,000? What if it was 4,000? Is it okay with you? So sensitivity analysis will tell you what if something happened, if it's good to, uh, with your decision or not. So let's see this example. So it's the same. So it's the same example that we have. We are saying the same thing. See, we, we are saying we are going to make a decision to have one, two, or zero, one or two. But his decision this time, can you see? His decision, this is the first one. See? This is what this is the first situation. Here we are saying, what if what if? So we are saying the first thing we think that the demand is 10% for zero. 50% for 1, 40% for 2. But what if, no, the demand is 1, uh, where is that? And what if there are alternatives? Yeah, I think, I think it's just the way off. I don't know, it's just Ah, oh, okay. So this is the original and this is what if it's here. So we have the original and we have the first alternative and we have the second alternative. So see, so we have this. And we have this one is what if. And we have this one is what if. Okay? So it's not like this. It's, they, they have it like this. So we have option number one. This is what we think it should happen. But what if this is the actual thing? That it's 50% it's that they are going to have zero demand. And just 10% 10, 10 that they are going to have one. Or what if it's 33% for each? So that we need to be able to calculate the expected value for each alternative. So number one, if I can have zero, 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 it's easy. There's not. Now number two, decision number two, we're gonna have one vote. So based on our first calculation, you remember it's 175, right? Now second one, can you see? Here when we change our probability, 
Because we say, what if? What's going to happen? Look, we are going to get less, so the expected value is less. Now, when we change also our probability, the expected value is less. So now we are saying, is that acceptable? It, is that acceptable? Because what if this is the, 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 the demand? The same thing here. We have this, we have it before. Now we have what if this is what we have, and what if this is what we have. Can you see here what, how we are doing? So we are saying that we have to make decision one or two or three. Before looking at this, we have the original one. We are saying we think that this is the demand is going to be 10%, 15, 40. But now we are coming to, to be sensitive. What if this is not the demand? Is that accepted? Is that accepted? So to make our decision, see, now we need to understand how we are going to make the decision. So what they are saying? They are saying, however, the combination indicates that only one yet should be stopped. So what they say, based on the sensitivity analysis, we think that we should have just one, not two. If you remember before, we decided to have what? Two. Because we said, based on the expected value, we are going to have two. But they are saying, we need to be sensitive. Because you need, the, the, what you said, the percentages are not correct, because you need to be sensitive to the economy. So they are saying, look, if we have the best alternative here, for one, two, three, it's going to be zero, based on this probability. This is for third alternative. We have another alternative here, it's going to give you this, and another alternative is going to give you the C. We change here even this rate. So what they are saying, for each alternative C, for each what if, you need to figure out what decision are you going to make. So for this alternative, we are going to make what? One unit. If you go up, see for this decision, if you go up. For first decision, which one are we going to make? Two. For this decision, which one are we going to make? Two. For this decision, which one are we going to make? Two. Two. So see, now we need to be sensitive to saying what if. You don't need this what if, if what, if you get this perfect information. If you get the perfect information, you don't need what if. Because you know exactly what's going to happen. But here, see, what if here, because we are always, we are really not sure. And we need to understand exactly what's going to happen. Clear, clear what sensitivity analysis? Let me give you another example for sensitivity analysis. We use it really very much. When you are creating a budget, and you are saying, we expect that next year we are going to have these revenue, these expenses. But in, in, in another way, you are saying that we expect that we are going to sell 100 cars, for that we are going to make 100 cars. So you need to be sensitive. Saying, what if we just sell 80? Can we cover our cost? What if we just sell 70? Can we cover our cost? So in another way, you start doing what if to say first. Do you remember break even? First, we understand how many cars you need to sell. Well, you need to sell at least 60 to be able to break even. Perfect. Now, what if we sell 70? What's going to happen? 80? What's going to happen? 50? What's going to happen? So that we have different scenarios to be able to know what's going to happen to your company if this happens. Why? Because when you are operating by the end of the year, maybe you will sell just 75. So that you know, okay, what if 75? You know exactly what's going to happen. So sensitivity analysis will help you really understand what's going to happen based on each scenario. Another way for you to use, to be able to figure out what's going to happen, we call it trial and error method, which is like inherited in the sensitivity analysis. And we can use it in the computer software. So you say, okay, here are my options, here are the different states, tell me what should happen. So you be like, if it's this, 10%, 10%, 80%, this will happen. 20, 20, see, so it will give you all the alternatives, what if, what if, what if, it will give you what will happen. Can you see from our old example that three, what if, gave us two, yet, and one gave us one. So that will probably, you should have two. Why? Because you said different what if, what if, what if, and most of them they say you should have two. One of them should, you should, should, 
they say you should have one, so you should have two. So what if will help you understand what is your best option if if uh, if something happened? See? So in that way you use what if also to be able to select the best alternative if what if is always indicating one option over another. 